Lately, I have been doing much less electronics video than I would have liked to, uh, because I didn't have much to say. Uh, I mean, there's not much you can say about this thing. But uh, I think that that's going to change soon, because I have gotten into the AliExpress game. Now what that means is that you go online, you type some words into this search box, you click on the items that you like, and about a month later you get a notification that says you have to go to the post office to get this. Simple as that. According to the packaging, it says on here that it is a 6WEI89C2051P1 that weighs 0.02 kilos and costs $1.22. But that's not really informative, is it? So because the labeling on the packaging is so uninformative, you have to open it to get a, an even vague idea of what's inside, which is quite annoying, but then you get a notification on what order it is, so it kind of balances out. Incidentally, I'd like to point out that this is not my actual address. I don't like to give my actual address to people, so uh, if you just like to send me something, don't send it to here. I don't actually know what would happen if you sent it to here. Maybe that would get to me. But I doubt it. Okay, so we shall open this. And inside we have... I think I know what this is. Yes, it's electronic parts. Two sets of various assorted electrical components, a microcontroller, uh, these three LED modules with seven segment displays, uh, and a PCB. So what's all that about then? So on AliExpress this is DIY Kits AT89C2051 electronic clock, so it's a clock digital tube LED display suite electronic module parts and components DC 9 to 12 volts I think I can manage that with $1 shipping um, and it comes from a shop called Geigzixing I have no idea how to pronounce that but if you'd like a link here is a QR code to this particular listing and the link itself, if you like that. So for the remainder of the video, I'm just going to be building one of these two kits. The other one can go over there. Uh, because I'm quite interested to see uh, if um, it's hackable. If you can reprogram the microcontroller therein to uh, do something besides being just a clock. I have no idea if that is possible or not, but I'd like to see if it is, because if it is, you could uh, potentially repurpose it like, I don't know, something. Okay, so I'm now just waiting for the sonar iron to heat up. Uh, I'd just like to point out, by the way, that this is not the only item I've received so far from AliExpress because uh, I've already got uh, the uh, DS1 DSO138 oscilloscope but I didn't record the video on this because it was a simple matter of assembling the acrylic pieces together because I didn't want to get the kit one because apparently it's uh, SMD soldering and I don't know how to do that yet. Uh, and I also gotten a module for an Arduino uh, that's a GSM module for an Arduino. So that's spoiler for a future video. Uh, so I am planning on continuing this sort of thing uh, and Maybe I could uh, do sort of a semi-regular uh, uh, feature like the post bag or something. But I have no idea if that's a good idea or not. So and just leave a comment down below if you think that's a good idea or not. 
Okay, so the song is pretty much up to temperature now, so let's just rip open this bag and take a look at the components therein. I really should have unpacked the cell tape first. No matter. So, what do we have? The answer is a lot of various stuffs. So, so there's the PCB. There's a whole lot of uh, free hole resistors. So and that's how uh, this thing will look like in the end. Other noteworthy things include various capacitors, LEDs, the uh, battery holder for the backup battery. Although I have been told that it doesn't quite work properly. Uh, the timing crystal, which is um, 12,000 uh, kilohertz, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Zener diode transistors. Uh, these uh, sound segment modules I mentioned earlier. And an instruction manual which I doubt we're gonna need, because it's heavily in Chinese. Oh, right, it is a 12 MHz crystal. I'm glad I got that right. If I recall correctly, you're supposed to solder in first the low profile parts. So in this case, that would be all of these resistors and probably some others around here somewhere but unfortunately i haven't quite learned the resistor color code yet and worse still these look like um, brown black black uh, and then purple uh, i can't remember what purple means but brown is one and black is zero so there are a lot of uh, one and something uh, resistors but the circuit board only calls for a couple over there, so apparently I'm gonna have to look at the manual. I'm thinking what the manual is trying to tell us is that this calls for two 10k resistors, which probably implies that these are 10k, uh, then it needs uh, uh, eight 470k uh, no, it's just 470 ohm resistors, so the one that we have 8 of, which is these, are 470k, and 4.7k are the ones that we have 6 of. I'm hoping that my uh, deduction is correct, because if not, I'm guessing... Oh, come on, what's the worst that can happen? Okay, so I've put all of the allegedly uh, 4.7k resistors in, and now I have to solder them. Um, and I believe that the proper way to do this is to get the soldering iron, and whilst heating up both the actual lead and the pad, flowing some solder into this because I believe that this makes for a better connection than if you just um, carry the solder onto this because the flux of the fumes that you may or may not see on camera um, uh, will uh, be cleaning the pin and the pad uh, rather than just evaporating away on the soldering iron tip. I've no idea if I've got that right, because uh, I'm not really um, soldering on PCBs frequently, uh, seeing as I don't really have any made, and basically this uh, I got mainly for soldering practice. Uh, so uh, let's see how that goes, but the connections that I did do over here, let's just do one more to finish this row up. Mm, there we go. Uh, the connections do look pretty nice, I'd have to say. Can you see that? Mm, is the camera focusing? I'm betting it does not want to focus on this because it's all reflective and shiny. But, 
Yeah, there you go. Um, I'd say that it looks relatively nice, at least compared to what I'm usually doing. I don't have any examples handy, but yeah, this looks okay. Okay, so I've done the other side as well. And now that you have soldered the pins, you have to trim off the excess parts. Um, and to do that, I believe you uh, bend them outwards slightly uh, and then uh, go with diagonal color snipping uh, them at the uh, point you saw through. Mm, I, yeah, this is magnetic, that's annoying. Um, and I'm guessing that these aren't the proper diagonal colors that you need to use for this. But unfortunately, this is the only good pair of uh, snips that I have at all. I mean, the only other snipping tool I have to hand is the wire stripper, and the wire stripper isn't applicable in this case at all. So, I'm wondering uh, how to remove the tiny bits uh, left over here, and I'm guessing that these are, mm, yeah, these are quite patently not the best tool for the job, but uh, I have nothing better to work with, so yeah. So this is the best result I could get with those snips, and I'm guessing that it's okay-ish, uh, but yeah, I should really uh, look into getting uh, more suited tip, uh, snips for cutting off the leads on the solid joints there. But anyway, I'm just gonna uh, go on to the other resistors here, and I'll be back once I've soldered them all. Actually, you know what? I could uh, just um, pause the video and return when it's done. Or I could do this while uh, time-lapsing it in post-production. That way you could see all of the uh, stuff that I'm doing right and or wrong. Uh, and I could also uh, just uh, speak some of the interesting stuff that I could find during the construction uh, while the video is rolling. So that could be a good idea. Yeah, um, I'm installing all of these resistors with all the bands pointing in the uh, same way. Uh, you don't have to do this, uh, but because resistors are non-polarized components, but I am doing this because uh, of OCD and reasons, and yeah, it just looks nicer that way. Okay, so here are the eight, um, uh, what were they again, uh, 470k or just 470 ohm resistors all in place, uh, I'm gonna solve them. Now, uh, interestingly, this uh, one resistor is quite near one of the 7 segment modules, uh, but all of the other ones of this kind are in this sort of nice row.
Uh, I have no idea what's up with that, but who am I to judge? I've just had an idea, by the way. I could, uh, in post-processing, add a clock on the uh, screen so that it could show the uh, actual wall time that has passed since I started this because uh, I usually enjoy time lapses uh, when you actually get a sense of how much time is being uh, shortened for you uh, so uh, yeah I'm just gonna do that um, and maybe add a note to the beginning of the video um, I mean not the video, the segment explaining what the clock is yeah that could work Yeah, I think I might have shortened these contacts, uh, and I'm guessing that they're quite important uh, n not to be short. And yeah, I've oh no, I fixed that uh, because uh, I'm just afraid that I uh, don't have any dissolving book handy, and. Yeah, that's not a good idea not to have the soldering wick or like any other sort of dissolving um, utensil uh, because if you breach some contact uh, more often than not you'll find it, uh, it's impossible to desolder them at least uh, in my experience that's usually the case um, so yeah I'm hoping that this works okay and now I'm gonna solder in, what should I solder in next? Mm, how about the diode? Uh, which, by the way, um, due to the symbol on the actual board, uh, appear not to be uh, Xenon diodes, but uh, actual normal diodes. And I just thought they are Xenon because they're in this uh, glass um, casing which you can't see because the camera isn't focusing but you can just make out the idea of it so yeah it's um, a diode in a glass casing and that's why I thought it was a Zener diode because they're usually in this sort of casing so I'm just uh, gonna stop rambling and solder those and there are not a lot of them point out at this point that diodes are polarized components um, as opposed to resistors you have to mind the way uh, you put them in because um, if you don't know what a diode is uh, it's essentially uh, lets current flow in only one direction uh, and it means that the mm, the conventional current, um, which goes from uh, positive to negative, um, will go through uh, to the direction marked by the black band or the uh, line on the silk screen on the PCB. Uh, in actuality, the uh, actual electron current uh, is going the other way. Uh, uh, and you have to blame the uh, original uh, creators of the uh, uh, circuit diagram specifications for that mm. uh, but essentially uh, you have to mind the way uh, these are oriented 
uh, as you do with uh, LEDs because what they essentially are are diodes that also emit light uh, and capacitors at least this kind of capacitor which is the uh, this kind of capacitor that's called an electrolytic capacitor uh, there's also tantalum capacitors uh, which are polarized and essentially you have to put the white band on the um, body of the capacitor to the um, striped part on the silk screen because if you don't then it goes bang presumably <laughs> So I've soldered in the diodes and I'm not entirely sure what they're for in the design. I'm guessing they're to protect from reverse polarity on uh, the input because uh, semiconductor uh, devices usually don't like it when you apply reverse current to them. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, uh, hang on, I've just discovered something, I believe. Um, if you take the one of the leftover pins and put them in here... Ah, right, so uh, you see there's uh, a line here that indicates that it just has to be connected with a jumper wire. Uh, so essentially what Mm, I'm gonna do is take one of these um, uh, leftover pins and put them in there and apparently that's the original idea of the creators of this I'm not entirely sure but I'm guessing that's how it works um, meanwhile the camera is flashing low battery so uh, I think that I'm gonna po pause for the time being uh, and uh, charge up the battery uh, and I'll be uh, back shortly Okay, so a significant amount of time has passed while I was waiting for the camera to recharge and The issue there is that the camera does not have any sort of input for power and that is really annoying because it means that if I uh, let the camera discharge uh, like I did there. Uh, I have to wait uh, like a very large amount of time. I don't actually have an idea of how long it was. I'll put a um, um, thing on the screen to show you that. Uh, so because of this um, I have ordered on AliExpress by the way a um, how do you call it? A thing to put your phone in, uh, to put it on a tripod, so uh, that should be more convenient for this uh, sort of purpose. Uh, so anyway, I'm now gonna solder in uh, these two capacitors, uh, what go uh, connecting to the um, crystal. Uh, apparently that's uh, to uh, help it oscillate in some manner. Uh, I'm not sure of the specifics of why this exists, uh, but um, I've seen uh, it done uh, quite a few times that you have uh, a crystal and two capacitors uh, connected to either end of the crystal and to ground. Uh, I don't really have a clue of why that uh, is, but uh, yeah, you can see here that they 
other two connections go to the crystal and the first two are going to ground. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but I'm guessing that the people had a good reason for this. So before I forget, I should probably put these um, um, and jumper links in uh, uh, because I'm afraid I might throw them away without thinking of this. Um, so yeah, I'm just uh, putting them in now, which is quite difficult, I have to say. How does this look? Mm, does this look like uh, something that should exist in this world? I have no idea if that's how this was supposed to go. I hope so, because if not, then I've just made a very big mistake. Although, on the bright side, the could result of this. One thing I'm concerned about is, is this actually supposed to go like this? Like, these lines on the silk screen, are they actual representative uh, of jumper links like I'm putting in? Or not? Uh, hang on, I'm just gonna look at the uh, list of words. Where's the list of words? Oh, I've misplaced the list of words. That's annoying. Uh, no matter. We'll just have to build it and see if this explodes. Yeah, it's quite challenging to uh, coordinate my hand in such a way so that I can actually uh, see what I'm doing and also um, uh, keep this uh, within shot of the camera because I haven't um, marked at all uh, where the uh, camera bounce lie. I should have done that, I didn't. So let's put in uh, this capacitor over here for good measure. Uh, what's the value? A 104, and it says a 104 on here. I doubt that you can see this because it's not in focus. But you'll have to trust me that this capacitor goes in here. <music> So that went there. Uh, what other low footprint components are there? I could put in the crystal now. I think the crystal is non-polarized. Yeah, it's non-polarized because there is no indication of what uh, polarity it should be in. So I'll just put it with the 12,000 uh, thing, uh, thing on the top. Uh, and reading in the... Uh, right direction uh, in relation to the uh, uh, the sound segment displays. Okay, so how about putting the button in next? Uh, the button is going on like this, but 
The question now is, what orientation does this go in? Because I frankly have no idea uh, which side of this uh, is being shorted, so I just uh, bring in the uh, multimeter. Um, just put the lead caps over there. Uh, putting in the multimeter and checking for continuity uh, between yeah, that's continuity. Uh, changing for continuity between these two sides. Because I think those are the ones that are being switched. So, is that true or is that false? Um, because I don't want to put this in here before uh, figuring this one out. Because I, the... Uh, if you can see this, uh, the legs of this are bent, uh, so that when you push this into the uh, PCB, it grabs the PCB, and you can't really easily remove it. That is useful when you're assembling this. Less useful when you're trying to redo the mistakes you made, of which I do many. And sometimes I also try to uh, get this sort of uh, button from uh, old electronics, and when I do that, uh, it's not very easy to accomplish. So that shorted uh, with that, and presumably these uh, contacts are the switched ones. Yeah, this is really uh, fumbly. So. If we probe on to, uh, you know what I could do? I could just put this into uh, a, a breadboard and just uh, test it like this. That's a good idea. So my hypothesis is that this pin is connected or not, uh, depending on the state of the button to that pin. So, if we probe like this, it's not connected, but, but if you push it, yeah. So, those uh, two connections that are on the, that have, that have the same curvature, you could say, uh, have to go on the different contacts. That's good to know. I do believe, though, that I could have figured this one out uh, b by using, like, the manual, but I said I've lost the manual somehow, so that's not gonna happen. Yeah, notice, uh, I've just pushed in the button uh, without soldering the pins, and it just sits there, and... Um, well, at this point, it's easy to pull this out, but uh, trust me, when I solve this, it won't be. Okay, so now I'm soldering in the uh, electrolytic capacitors, uh, which are these uh, cans here. And uh, as, I, as I've noted before, uh, you have to mind the polarity, because uh, I'm not entirely sure of the physical reason behind this, but essentially if you uh, connect it to the wrong polarity, uh, uh, it will overheat inside, uh, and it basically explodes, and that's not usually a good thing. Um, I mean, if it is what you need, uh, you know uh, that, so usually you have to put it uh, in the uh, right way around. Uh, and the right way around is indicated by this uh, white bar, which uh, should go on the negative side. Mm. Instantly, if you are confused as to uh, uh, what all the names of the electronical components I'm referencing are, um, 
I uh, recommend that you check out, uh, for example, Big Life's video on um, electronic components. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, basically, uh, he just goes through all of these uh, components and explains uh, what one of each one of them is called, what it's used for, and that sort of thing. Uh, so, uh, if you're interested in that, you should definitely go check it out. Uh, the link will be in the description below. The bigger electrolytic capacitor goes into here, uh, and uh, the way it's located uh, right near the connector uh, for the uh, power to the board, uh, it looks like it's just uh, filtering the uh, uh, input so that it's actually DC. I think that's what's going on here. Yeah, it's filtering capacitor, certainly. Um, uh, so, uh, if you notice, this one is larger than these ones because these are much, uh, these have far fewer, far less capacitance. This one has uh, 10 microfarads, and this one is uh, 220 microfarads. Uh, but uh, there's also a difference in the voltage rating, because if the voltage rating is lower, then the capacitor will be smaller, uh, because the voltage rating is... Uh, essentially what it means is that uh, above this point uh, there will be uh, an electric arc inside it, uh, and uh, that's not a good thing, because as I said it probably will explode. Uh, so. Uh, if the voltage rating is smaller, the um, uh, plates of the capacitor can get uh, closer together. Uh, but uh, if the voltage rating is higher, then they have to be further apart. Uh, and because of this um, size, it's basically determined by the capacitance rating, because that's the surface area of the plates. Uh, and the uh, voltage rating, because that's the distance between the plates. So now I'm gonna solder in all of these components, uh, which have uh, three pins. Now most of them are marked 8550, and that's uh, um, transistor. Uh, basically it's an electric switch. Uh, it switches uh, based on uh, how much current is flowing into it. That's actually not true, but uh, the actual description is quite more complicated. But there's also one over there, which is marked 78L05. And that's not uh, a transistor, that's a voltage regulator. What the voltage regulator does is it basically limits uh, the voltage to uh, some sort of value by acting like a uh, variable resistor. It resists um, current uh, just enough so that uh, the voltage at the output is, uh, in this case, 5 volts, because it says 05 at the end. Um, so 78 is the series, I believe. Uh, L means it's low power, so um, somewhere around less than, how do you call it? I'm not sure, I believe it's about uh, less than 100 milliamps. Uh, and 05 is the output voltage. But this one I'm holding is a transistor, and as such I'm putting it into here. I should have pulled the pins apart, but I didn't. You 
know what? I should actually get the voltage regulator out of the way so that I don't get confused with the remaining transistors. And if I'm correct, yeah, it says here 78L05. You cannot see this because the camera refuses to focus uh, in macro view essentially. Uh, I'm hoping this will get fixed when I switch to the camera in my phone, but I'm not sure. jump cut uh, because the camera somehow refused to continue recording uh, beyond the point um, of 27 and something minutes. I have no idea what that may be about. I seem to recall something about uh, that uh, consumer cameras uh, are limited to in the recording length to around 30 minutes so that uh, they uh, don't get like text differently. I'm not entirely sure that's a thing but if it is that might be the reason why. Um, again I'm certain that uh, the film camera can record uh, videos of large length and basically the film camera should be much uh, easier to operate in any way. I mean, not in any way, in every way, because uh, it's easier to get data from. It's uh, uh, essentially the only downside to it is that you have to get a special bracket uh, to put it on a tripod, but that's going to be fixed soon. Uh, and I'm hoping that the video quality will be consistent because uh, up until now I've been uh, toggling between two cameras uh, which have mutually incompatible batteries um, and when one of them runs out uh, I put it on charge and uh, take the other one uh, to uh, basically record the um, continue recording this video with that one and that's not for um, like uh, simple to do because you have to uh, account for uh, differing uh, how do you call it uh, resolutions of the cameras while um, combining the videos from them and that's uh, yeah that's annoying I'm not entirely sure that these two pins are supposed to be connected uh, and I've lost the bloody book of words, so I can't figure out if that's supposed to be there or not. Um, tell you what, I'm just gonna uh, scrape the um, connection there slightly, and if it turns out to be important, I'll uh, just uh, put on a blob of solder to cover this area up. Uh, uh, actually, I think it is important because uh, it goes to uh, um, the uh, LCDs, so uh, uh, we'll see if the LCD be behaves weirdly, that'll be the reason why. I mean, not LCD, LED is seven segment display because uh, soldering LCDs to the board would be much less uh, uh, simple to do because if I recall correctly LCDs are slightly temperature dependent as well mm, uh, which is why you don't uh, usually get uh, kits with LCDs to be soldered on them transistors left but I can't see one of them I'm hoping I have lost it 
that would be really annoying because then I'd have to look up the number and see if this is a PNP or an NPM because if it is an APNP that would be uh, most annoying uh, because I don't have any in stock if only uh, uh, PNPs uh, wait a moment no I have NPNs and I don't have PNPs uh, so if it turned out to be uh, a PNP then that then basically one of the LEDs won't work I believe that would be Actually, I do wonder if uh, there is a direct correlation between these transistors and the uh, LED modules, because I'm beginning to suspect that this may actually be uh, multiplexed in some way. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it's multiplexed in some way. Uh, so... Uh, if uh, something goes wrong here, then I believe that there will be like uh, less predictable problems than uh, there would have been had this uh, been uh, simply connected uh, uh, like uh, usual uh, LED uh, boards. Uh, but now. I need that transistor. Did I drop the transistor? Uh, Alright, here it is. Uh, um, so... Uh, okay, and after that, uh, it'll be the uh, LEDs, the other type of LEDs, and uh, the connector the mm, uh, the battery uh, and the microcontroller itself so we're nearly there <laughs> lifted the pad there um, that would be really annoying because it means that I'll uh, have to scrape at the board to get uh, to the actual copper that um, connects this and yeah that will be a pain in the arse yeah I've screwed this one up really hard um, what am I going to do? Um, you know what I could do? Uh, I could just look at where this connection runs, uh, which is this pin over here, and then run a bodge wire from here to there. That seems like a good idea. I mean, it seems like a terrible idea, but that's the best one we have at the moment, so... I'm just looking, uh, do I have any uh, kind of wires that I could use for this in the vicinity? And the answer is, I only have these uh, DuPont connectors, um, but if I just splice uh, a tiny bit of that one uh, and put it here, yeah, that should work. Of course, I don't really like that I'm doing this because it means that the uh, thing itself will uh, look less nice, but there you go. So that's the length approximately over like this. Uh, and then use the wire stripper. There's the wire stripper. You cannot see the wire stripper. Now you can see the wire stripper. Uh, the wire stripper is actually a very useful tool for this sort of thing because uh, it allows you it allows you to uh, strip these uh, small and not so small wires without having to 
I like scrape them with a knife or something uh, which is really useful if you want to uh, like not break the um, uh, actual cores inside um, and only remove the insulation also just quicker uh, because uh, the uh, uh, thing uh, strips the wires in one motion whereas manually you'd have to uh, do a couple and yeah uh, if you ever have to do a deal with uh, any sort of wires you definitely should get a wire stripper so that goes on to here oops Oop. Um, I'm just trying not to bridge these resistors together and the other end goes to here um, and I've made slightly longer than necessary so it doesn't really want to stay there um, there we go um, yeah, that's, I think that's serviceable, I really hope that's serviceable, mm. Mm. okay, we shall see in due course whether this thing if I've just destroyed this by not being basically by being a dumbass um, so now we've got the LEDs uh, the LEDs have uh, are also polarized just like diodes and capacitors and they and to indicate uh, their polarity they have the long pin and the short pin uh, the I can't remember which one goes where, but I do remember that if you look carefully at the casing, you cannot look carefully at the casing because of the camera, and it's uh, and that's not all willing to focus. But the idea is that if you look closely at the uh, actual chip, uh, you'll notice that uh, there are two metal parts inside the casing. Uh, one of them is uh, pretty large. Um, well, like, it's shaped like an anvil, and the other part um, uh, only has a small wire that jumps onto the anvil part. The anvil part is negative, uh, and the uh, other part is positive, so the anvil part has the shorter pin here, and so the shorter pin goes to the opposite of the positive. So it goes on like this. Uh, also, the LED has a, a longer and a shorter. Um, um, no, I'm thinking of the other thing. Uh, the LED has a one of the sides uh, where it's uh, been taped off slightly, uh, and that uh, side, I believe, indicates the negative two. I can't remember uh, which of the um, side, which of the negative or positive is the anode or the cathode. I think the negative is the cathode. Not really sure. Hmm. Да. Все еще работаю. Да, я сейчас заканчиваю. Там приготовлена картошка. Да, отлично. Заметь, однако, что когда я говорю, то есть когда я говорю камере, мне надо, чтобы было тишина. Так что. Я тут еще не уверен, но тут у меня уже немного остается. Нет, где-то примерно десяти, возможно. Ну я понимаю, я понимаю. Сейчас как раз я а, впаиваю все.
So basically, if I'm correct, then the long pin is the positive. And if I'm not correct, this means that I'll have to resolder all uh, these LEDs, um, which uh, will be a pain, but at least it's doable, unlike the button, uh, which you... Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, you can't really remove it. Uh, you uh, put it once and then it's basically stuck there forever. You can pry it out uh, using a screwdriver, but uh, then you get uh, all the pins twisted and that's not a good thing if you want to reuse it. Basically, it's impossible to reuse buttons. That's just as well, because they're pretty cheap and you can uh, get loads of them uh, on a single order. I believe I saw um, uh, them on AliExpress uh, being uh, sold in lots of thousands for uh, 10 kopecks um, a piece. Uh, and um, just for reference, uh, as of this recording, uh, one ruble, which is 100 kopecks, uh, is mm, uh, one sixtieth of a dollar, so uh, one dollar is about sixty rubles, and this is um, one sixtieth times uh, one tenth of a dollar, so one six hundredth. That wasn't supposed to be shorted. That was not supposed to be shorted at all. And that's read now. That's good. Because you do not want unwanted short circuits because they are unwanted and they can cause all sorts of mayhem, which I don't believe I have to describe because. Well, basically, if you want to describe, you can just go and look at various uh, YouTube channels um, uh, that uh, feature electrical explosions. Only um, on a much smaller scale, because I'm limited by the power of my bench power supply. So, now... I'm gonna solder in this uh, terminal post onto here. And this is the main power connector. Uh, um, basically, you put a wire in there and then you twist uh, the screws on top. Uh, and I'm not sure what this sort of connector is called. I've always called it a terminal post. Uh, but I'm sure that there's a more proper name for it, uh, and I can't remember it now. Uh, the one thing that's annoying is that it doesn't grab like uh, many of the other uh, uh, components do. So you have to push this into the board before you solder it in. And that's difficult if you consider it that I have uh, soldered the capacitor first and I should not have soldered the capacitor first because that's one of the points of uh, soldering the components um, in the order of their height uh, because the tallest component uh, will um, be uh, supporting the weight of the entire board and because of that it will get pushed into the board just like this one did not, so I have to resolder it slightly and push it into the board, and it's still not pushed hard enough. Um, oh, screw that! I'm just gonna adjust it one last time, and let's just say that this is okay. Mm. Yeah, that'll do. Um, now. How about the battery connector, um, the battery compartment, this sort of thing? Interestingly, I've noticed that uh, this uh, metal piece uh, inside here uh, is actually 
separate from the uh, uh, main body. So there's at least three pieces to this. Uh, the one uh, over here that I don't want to try to uh, pull out. This one uh, just popped out during postage. Uh, so and during transit that is. So uh, I figured that out. But uh, this one I don't want to pry out because I want this uh, uh, still operational. Um, so we'll put this in like so and try and solder this in. Uh, all right, uh, so when you solder this bit in, it can't get out and that's why uh, these uh, um, battery holders uh, don't uh, spontaneously uh, disassemble while being soldered onto the board. That's clever. Notice that uh, when you solder these large pins, uh, they uh, flow quite nicely and uh, get this sort of uh, very nice looking cone shape on top. Uh, whereas with the other ones, it is quite possible to uh, like not uh, do this right. Uh, so basically larger pins are easier to solder. Um, so now let's do actually let's do the uh, chip socket first the chip socket and the chip itself is uh, wound like so for some reason so let's unravel this and get the chip socket uh, the chip got some of its legs bent during transit i suppose and that's not a very good thing, but anyway, you put the chip socket in there, uh, making sure that the uh, indentation on here matches the one uh, printed on the silk screen layer. Uh, and then, because of uh, how I ordered these things, which I screwed up uh, once again, I'm gonna have to try and hold uh, this in position and with one hand and solder with the other and the third that's the problem I'm sure that there's a more reasonable way to do this uh, Julian Illitz I believe uh, does this uh, while uh, he basically he puts a piece of blue tack on the component uh, that he's soldering onto the board uh, from the um, obverse side and um, while the blue tag holds it he solders it on on the reverse side so I'm gonna have to try and carefully uh, solder the pin one on here the blob on there oh, I've just we solder that pin, so that's all right, and uh, then push this in, reheat that, um, go off camera quite a lot, uh, and uh, solder this opposite pin off here, but a way too much solder than I needed. Uh, and push this in there. This happens all the time. So I soldered that one in, and basically now it holds. So I just go and solder all of the other pins on here. And the video camera has spontaneously decided to stop the video once again, uh, which might be serving as an indicator that I'm taking way too long to do this. But come on, I'm be I'll be doing this as a time lapse, so it should not worry you, and that should not worry the camera because I mean.
maybe what the camera is trying to do is uh, some sort of uh, energy preservation thing uh, whereby uh, if you've left it running for too long the implication is that you've just left it and you aren't supposed to do that but yeah it's quite a pain I must tell you <laughs> socket is in there's only a couple of pins that have too much salt on them and I can't seem to get it off that's not a good thing I should like put some sort of insulating thing in between do I have some sort of insulating thing uh, I would like um, like a toothpick to do this. I don't believe I have one handy. That's not very good. And that's where the dissolving wick would have come in handy. Or the... Um, uh, dissolving suction thing which I can't remember what it's called but yeah that's not bridged anymore I think I'm gonna just stop touching this with the uh, soldering iron and move on to the LED display and that I believe should be the final parts of this because of the rest of the board looks populated so we just put this in there Ah, that's nice. They've put a little film on top of all of these three. That's good. Wait a moment, is that actually protective film or is that just sellotape? Um, I think it is some sort of sellotape. Although, maybe the protective film is sellotape. So, hmm. Now this is where um, things get curious because usually it has a display position like this 8.8 .8 point but uh, this uh, thing over here says that uh, it has to be 0.8.8 point .8. and I'm not sure how to interpret this and I've lost a bloody book of words so that's like there's a double lamb for you I think that should go on so uh, what other option is there? there's this one uh, which is 0.8.8 .8, but rotated uh, along the x-axis uh, flipped along the x-axis I should say um, I think I just lost it without any trace uh, I'm just I'm gonna try and uh, arrange the mess off camera so that I can find it. If it is indeed here, that is. Um, yeah, I've irre irrevocably misplaced it. So, what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm just going to solder it in the way that makes sense and if it doesn't work I'm just going to flip it because basically that's the only two uh, positions that it can be in because it can't be on the reverse side because of reasons um. Okay, so that's one of the three LED displays in, and I'm just gonna put all of uh, the remaining two 
in the same way. I'm really hoping that this works because if it does not, then I, it means that I'll have to desolder um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 thrice. And that is really impossible. I, I presume that it's really impossible because I don't own any sort of desoldering equipment. I really hope that I have chosen the right way to put this in. But I mean, come on, this is the only way that makes sense. So, it stands to reason that this is the way you're supposed to be putting this thing. Okay, so, let's just get on with it. And I'm not going to crop the leaves um, at this point because I'm afraid that this might be the wrong way, but I'm really hoping it is. Now, the camera has switched to uh, the uh, flashing uh, low battery mode, uh, so I have to be fast about this. I'm going to put this chip into here, minding where the Pin 1 is going, it goes on here, and carefully putting this in, and I'm, and, oh, there, the pins are all bent the wrong way, that's probably due to damage during postage, um, and I'm gonna try and seat this in here carefully so that I don't end up irrevocably damaging any of the pins because that would be most annoying um, um, that pin doesn't look right and I'm not staying in shot here uh, you know these things happen Especially when you're not used to uh, din sockets, I believe they're called dip sockets. Right, that's the word. Um, din sockets are on uh, some sort of industrial equipment to put in uh, uh, circuit breakers, I believe. Um, That's not gonna work. Hmm. Yeah, these sockets aren't exactly the greatest. Uh, I would have preferred zero insertion force socket, but you can't get them in uh, this uh, price range. So, tell you what, I'm just gonna turn off the camera for a moment and then return. Alright, so I've inserted the chip into the socket, plugged in the uh, cables to the power supply, set the power supply to 9 volts. Uh, so here goes about an hour of build time. Contact! There we go. So that's working. Um, this these LEDs haven't lit up. Uh, I'm guessing that that's uh, due to the bond wire, um, or maybe it's not supposed to light up. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, the uh, chip does appear to be working, and as such, yeah, this build basically, I think it's done. Yeah, so um, I'm afraid that I'm going to be uh, testing this uh, later. Oh, that's uh, 
a weird way to represent... Oh! That's because I'm touching the crystal! Oh, that makes sense. So that's how it's multiplexing the output. So, okay, so... Uh, I, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to leave the... Uh, uh, other tests for later, as the camera is really starting to complain about the battery. Uh, but, yeah. This is perfectly okay. That's amazing.